Hey guys, it's Miss Crawford. I am coming to you live from Northwestern's beautiful campus. Um, I'm in class this week, but it was such a beautiful day out that I thought I would step outside after lunch and introduce you guys to our first summer reading book recommendation. Um, so I chose the 57 bus by Dashka Slater. I absolutely love this book. I actually reread it for the second time so that I'd be kind of prepared to talk to you guys about it when we get back to school. Um, you may recognize it because it can be found in my classroom library. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why I like this book, mostly because it really um, highlights two sides of a, of a really ignited and you know horrible experience that happened. Um, it really explores race and uh, class and gender in the inc incarceration and in families. So it's got a lot of really um, heavy themes, but it does a really beautiful job of kind of highlighting them through these characters. This is actually a true story or it's based on a true story. Um, and I really like that as well. The structure is really interesting, um, which you'll have to find out for yourself if, if you pick it up. All right, so I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna kind of give you the summary from the inside flap um, of the book. And then I'm gonna dive in and read you a small amount to kind of hook you hopefully. All right, so the inside flap says, one teenager in a skirt, one teenager with a lighter, one moment that changes both of their lives forever. If it weren't for the 57 bus, Sasha and Richard would never have met. Both were in high school students, sorry, both were high school students from Oakland, California, one of the most diverse cities in the country, but they inhabited different worlds. Sasha, a white teen, lived in the middle class foothills and attended a small public school while Richard, a black teen, lived in the crime-plagued flatlands and attended a large public school. Each day, their paths overlapped for a mere eight minutes. But one afternoon on the bus ride home from school, a single reckless act left Sasha severely burned and Richard charged with two hate crimes and facing life imprisonment. This case garnered international attention, thrusting both teenagers into the spotlight. So that's a good chunk of, of the inside flap, little summary that the author provides you. Um, so now I'm gonna kind of dive into the book with you and just kind of give you a sneak peek. Sorry if the camera's a little shaky, it's very windy out here. So if this book is, like I was telling you, the structure is really interesting. So the first, uh, I don't know, 15 or 20 chapters are from Sasha and then the second 15 or 20 are from Richard. And then it, it carries on about the fire and justice. So it's, it's a really interesting structure, and I actually really enjoyed how the author broke it up. I think it added a lot to the, the total narrative of the story and let us get multiple perspectives. All right, so the 57 bucks. I'm going to read you the author's note or a part of it because I think it's really important. It says, this is a true story. All the people in this book are real although in some cases, pseudonyms or initials were used. Young people are identified by their first name only. The details of the story were pieced together from a variety of sources, including interviews, documents, letters, videos, diaries, social media posts, and public records. Quotes from these sources are verbatim, so that means that they're exact, except in a few cases where I removed last names, replacing them with long dashes. Information from first-hand accounts was corroborated with official records wherever possible, unless those records were sealed or are not available to the public. In those cases, I relied on the memory of witnesses and participants. The pronouns and names used for gender non-conforming people were approved by the people in question. So she's kind of introducing this to you, and I love that this is, you know, a non-fiction oriented story, but it's pulling from all these different sources, which just lets you know as the reader um, it's, it's more authentic and, and you feel like you're getting a really clear picture of what happened instead of just one person's side of the story. All right, the 57 bus. Monday, November 4th, 2013. By 4.30 in the afternoon, the first mad rush of after-school passengers has come and gone. What's left are stragglers and stay -laters swiping their bus passes as they climb onto the 57 bus and take seats among the coming home workers, the shoppers and errand doers, 
the other students from high schools and middle schools around the city. The bus is loud, but not as loud as sometimes. A few clusters of kids are shouting and laughing, and an older woman at the front keeps talking to the driver. Dark is coming on. Daylight savings ended yesterday, and now evening rushes into the place where afternoon used to be. Everything is dustier, sleepier, winterier now. Passengers look at their phones or stare through the scratched and grimy windows at the warning light. Sasha sits near the back. For much of the journey, the teenager has been reading a paperback copy of Anna Karenina for a class in Russian literature. Today, like most days, Sasha wears a t-shirt, a black fleece jacket, a gray flat cap, and a gauzy white skirt. A senior at a small private high school, the teenager identifies as agender, neither male or female. As the bus lumbers through town, Sasha puts down the book and drifts into sleep, skirt draped over the edge of the seat. A few feet away, three teenage boys are laughing and joking. One of them, Richard, wears a black hoodie and an orange-billed New York Knicks hat. A 16-year-old junior in Oakland High School, he's got hazel eyes and a slow, sweet grin. He stands with his back to Sasha, gripping a pole for balance. Sasha sleeps as Richard and his companions goof around, play fighting. Sleeps as Richard's cousin Lloyd bounds up and down the aisle, flirting with the girl up front. Sleeps as Richard surreptitiously flicks a lighter and touches it to the hem of that gauzy white skirt. Wait. In a moment, Sasha will wake inside of a ball of flame and begin to scream. In a moment, everything will be set in motion. Taken by ambulance to a San Francisco burn unit, Sasha will spend the next three and a half weeks undergoing multiple surgeries to treat second and third degree burns, running from her calf to her thigh. Arrested at school the following day, Richard will be charged with two felonies, each with a hate crime clause that will add time to his sentence if he is convicted. Citing the severity of the crime, the district attorney will charge him as an adult, stripping him of protections that are normally given to juveniles. Before the week is out, he will be facing the possibility of life imprisonment. But none of that has happened yet. For now, both teenagers are just taking the bus home from school. Surely, it's not too late to stop things from going wrong. There must be some way to wake Sasha, divert Richard, and get the driver to stop the bus. There must be something that you can do. Oh, so that's just the first chapter, the first little chunk. And already, like, I just get so excited reading that, and it makes me want to just reread it for the third time again. Uh, so I hope that that kind of piqued your interest. I know, like, it touches on so many different categories, and it's so relatable for all people, I think. So I'm hoping that you guys either go check it out from the library or purchase a copy of it. Again, it's the 57 bus um, by Dashka Slater. And uh, it's, it's just such a great, really great book. If you do end up reading the book, please shoot me an email and let me know what you think about it. And uh, we can have some conversations when we get back from school or we can, we can talk this summer. I'd love to hear your opinions and see if you really fell in love with this book as much as I did. All right, guys, um, I'm going to get back to class. Have a great rest of your day and I hope your summer is going fantastically. Love you so much.